Hello and welcome to BlunderTutor.com. My name is Tom Latvies and this is the fourth tutorial in the Blunder Bootcamp series. In this tutorial we're going to go over material basics in cycles in Blunder. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the basically finished product of what we'll get through in this tutorial. Basically just creating some basic shaders. Um, some glass, maybe like a ceramic looking shader, and then uh, this will be a unfinished table t uh, material that we'll finish in the texturing tutorial after this. So let's get into Blender. So this is my finished scene um, for this tutorial. So um, I'm going to actually open up the project that we just finished in the last tutorial and we will work from there. You can download this if you didn't follow along in the last tutorial you can download this on the page on the website. Alright so first I'm just gonna save this as my material tutorial. Okay Cool, so right now, um, depending on your scene, really, I haven't done anything with lighting, so let's just go into rendered view right here. And as you can see, it's pretty dark, and uh, we only have that one default lamp in the scene. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and delete this lamp on here. Let me turn on uh, my screen cascades, cool. All right, so now without that lamp, we're going to have a very dark scene, it's very flat lighting. All this is doing is getting lighting from the environment, which, as you can see, is just gray. So it's gray on gray. So what we will do right now is, uh, in the world settings, we could actually just, I'll brighten up a little, I think at about midway on there in my scene it's a little brighter but obviously it's still awful so what we'll do is uh, we'll get started with creating materials to create a material in uh, cycles what you're gonna do is you know select your object go over here to your material settings we'll create a new one I'm gonna call this ceramic and uh, by default it's just going to create a, a diffuse material with basically a very bright whitish color so if we now look at that in the rendered setting you can already see that's uh, you know brighter than the rest of it but it generally it looks about the same so what we're going to want to do is start experimenting with that the way I like to work with uh, uh, you know materials in Blender is with with cycles you can work over here in your little toolbar on the side but it's pretty difficult to fine-tune anything it's actually a lot easier if you create a little new window up here and uh, go into the node editor and this is actually one of my most often used you know screen layouts where I'll have my uh, scene down here and I'll have my uh, node tree up here uh, horizontally because since the node tree goes from left to right it's a lot easier to see it like this instead of vertically so this is how I work I would recommend it so as you can see this is pretty much telling us the exact same information as it is over here we have our one input node which is our, our shader node and it's just the diffuse with zero roughness and then we have our output which is the material itself that's what is feeding into our scene when we render it so right now all we have is diffuse let's actually get some glossiness to this so what we're going to do is uh, shift A in the shaders option uh, I'll add a glossy node and then what we're going to have to do is to mix these together 
we're gonna have to go into shader mix shader and uh, now you can just grab this put it in the top take this put it in the bottom and uh, put this over here I'm gonna unplug that one and now that's a very basic uh, setup with both diffuse color and uh, some glossiness to get some reflections in there uh, by default the glossy material node will have a 0.2 roughness which I'll probably keep around there but just so you can see if you have a zero roughness it'll actually be perfectly uh, reflective like uh, metal or like a mirror or something so let's let's take a look at that so right now you could already see it's changed a little you could we're starting to see some uh, reflection in the table it's actually getting a self reflection I think it's seeing this plate over here and now this is far too uh, glossy but that was just an example and uh, you know what I'm actually gonna add some lights into this scene so we can see what we're doing so what I'm gonna do is uh, add a plane and this is actually another way that in cycles you could light in a scene entirely with just uh, planes and what we'll do is actually uh, I'm gonna scale this up around there and uh, what we'll do is add a new material I'll call this just light for now and We'll get rid of this diffuse material and just add a an emission shader, which is basically just a light. By default, it'll just have a strength of one. And already, let's see what that looks like compared to the original scene. And you can already see that's, for one, giving us some nice shadows. It's lighting all of these objects. I'm getting some nice reflections already. Um, this already looks a lot better. In my scene that you saw earlier I actually had two of these so what I'm gonna do is take this duplicate it by hitting shift D I'm gonna move it over here rotate it around I'm gonna scale it down on the Y and what you can actually do is uh, see where our 3D cursor is if, if I hit uh, period on the keyboard it'll turn my uh, my manipulator up by to the 3D cursor and if I hit a uh, comma it'll go back to the object that's selected so right now I want to rotate around the 3D cursor so if I hit period it'll move that there and now if I hit R to rotate you can see I'm rotating around that directly so I'm just gonna move it you know maybe a little like that to get a little behind the objects make sure that's not in our image which it's not and now let's look at that again and yeah that's this is pretty similar to what the the lighting setup was in my scene originally so and what I actually like to do is just to get some variation I'll make this one here we'll take this smaller light on the left side and I'm gonna if you hit this two right here it'll actually since they're sharing this material this one has a two on it or they both have the two. So with this one, I want to have its own material, but I want to start with this as a basis. So if I hit this two, it'll actually now call it light.001, and it will create a new custom material. So I'll just call that light two. And I'm gonna give this one a little bit of a blue tint to it. And then with this one, I'm actually gonna pump it up to like three strength. I'm gonna give it a yellow tint. And now we look at that. Actually, that might be a little bright. Maybe I'll go back to two. Yeah, so that'll give us some nice variation. We could really experiment with our shaders now. Okay, so go back to solid view for now. So we'll go back to our ceramic shader. I think it was, it was pretty simple, the one I created. What I did was I, I believe I turned this glossiness to maybe a 0.15 and uh, let's take a look at that. And then maybe I just turned it up. So this uh, FAC value right here 
is basically the mix value between these two. So right now it's 0.5, which means it's using 50% of the diffuse and 50% of the glossy. And, and it goes from zero to one. So if I was at zero, it would only be using the diffuse. And if I went all the way up to one, it'll use whatever's on the bottom. So it would be using only the glossy. I think in, for this instance, uh, I used maybe like a 0.35, something around there. I th think that was maybe even less, maybe like 0.25. Yeah, that's looking closer. Maybe I'll go up to 0.3. Okay. Um, maybe this was a little glossier. 0.1 over here for roughness. Yeah, that's getting similar to what I had. You know, this is the kind of thing that you'll you'll play around with until you get it to your liking. So we'll get out of that. Now I for this, I'm just gonna give it the same ceramic shader as well as the plates. Let's look at that now. Let's see if we're getting any better reflections on those. And in fact, with the plate, I might have even made the plates a little glossier. So with that. I'll make that new one and call that plate. And I'm gonna make this even glossier, so I'll make it like a 0.5. And with the roughness, I'll make it a 0 0.05. So now we're getting a little more reflection on that plate. And we might actually wanna work on our placement of that cup. It looks like it's just floating there. So that's pretty good for now. Um, okay, so now with our coffee pot, this one is actually going to have two different materials. So I'll show you how to um, give a single object separate materials. So right now it has no materials. So we'll create new, I'll call it one of them glass. And for that, obviously we will just go down here. You could do, you could either do the drop down right here and select one, or you could go up here and select it. For this one, since it's so simple, I, I only use the glass material for this. They're just default settings for now. Um, I'll leave it as that. But now if we look at that rendered, the entire thing is gonna be glass clearly at the top would not be glass. So what we're gonna do is go into edit mode. If I click on these top vertices and hit L, it'll select all of those. And now if I hit L on the handle, it'll also select those. I'll go over here, add a new material, plus new. I'll call this plastic. Ooh, that is not plastic. All right, and uh, right away I'll just hit assign. And now we can tab out of edit mode. Uh, to differentiate those, so you can see if we're doing that correctly, what I'll do is uh, I'll color the plastic one just a, another color so that you can see, all right, that is indeed selected. It looks it's like it's correct. Um, now if we go into rendered, you can see that that is no longer glass. So with that, what I actually did was to make it plastic looking. Uh, I believe I colored it brown, so I will, this is another one where I, I used both diffuse and glossy. So I'll add a glossy shader. I will add a mix shader. And then we'll put those together. This one I might have left it at, well, yeah, 0.4, 0.5. And I think I left it maybe even, maybe not perfect, but maybe 0.025 or something, pretty low on the roughness. And for the color, I just made it a dark brown color, something like that. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that. I'm gonna save real quick. All right, so rendered. 
Mm. The glossiness. Not liking that too much. Let's see, maybe it was less than that. 0.3. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I want more of the brown color. It's actually looking a little too, I like it a little, maybe like that. Okay. Um, yeah, let's make it even less glossy. Okay, that's looking okay. All right. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my computer crashed. Okay, so we will get back to the table. So, all right, so I will create a new material for the table. Like I said, it was both a glossy and fuse, so I'll add glossy and I'll add a mix that and I actually move this down okay put that like point one I'll leave that also at a point one that was fine for the color. I'll leave it because we're actually going to add a texture to it. So it'll just be, well, yeah, I'll make it maybe a little darker. So I'm going to make it a wood texture. So make it look a little darker. And then the viewport I'll also just grab that color. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, take a look at that. Actually, I don't think the point one's going to be enough now that I think about it. Might be a little, oh, it'll be okay. It's gonna be a glossy table. So as you can see now, these are looking a little more white like plates. I might actually, I don't know if those are glossy enough. It might be too, uh, too rough on the, no, it's such a little roughness. Huh. All right, well, I'll leave that for now then. It's hard to judge when you don't have your scene finished with, without any textures or anything. So we'll leave that for now. Also, this won't be the final lighting. Uh, and then for this back wall, I was, I'm gonna make this a brick wall. So once again, I'll add a wall material and we'll, I'm just gonna leave that as its default setting. I guess, I mean, yeah, I won't even change the color. So, all right, so I mean, that's, that's about it on this scene. Uh, I'm gonna actually create a new scene real quick just to go over a few other things. So, uh, one moment, please. Okay, so uh, I've just created a very simple scene here uh, with a bunch of Suzanne heads just to show you diff how different uh, materials react to lighting in the world. Now what I've done is, uh, when I go to rendered, you can see I actually have an HDRI image in the scene to light. It basically it's image-based lighting. Um, you could both find for free and buy HDR images online to use to light your scene. A lot of the time you want them, especially if you want to get nice reflections. Um, so I'm just gonna go over these real quick. This uh, first head right here is just the default diffuse shader. Um, that's just at zero roughness. We can put it up to one. And it's uh, not, you can see it's not reflecting as much light. It's a little darker actually than if it were zero roughness. This is glossy. So right now, this is this, these always look the best in like an HDR lighted image because you get all these cool reflections on it. So as you can see, you could use this as a metal shader um, or, you know, so much in the real world has even very slight reflections. So you'll use this a lot in different shaders, most often mixed with a diffuse or something else. And as you can see, I could go all the way up to one on roughness on this too. And when I do that, you can't even really tell that it's a, uh, glossy shader at that point but if you were to do it at like a point one 
You can see it's already getting kind of like a chrome look to it. You can brush chrome or something and then 0.5 even, it's even more so. So you can do a lot with that, it's a fun shader. Here we have just the default glass shader. This is another cool one, it has both reflections and uh, refractions in it. And you're gonna get all these cool looking shapes through the glass. Um, that one is a nice one by uh, just by default. But uh, you know, obviously, you could use this for glass, for water, liquids, um, all kinds of things. Once again, you're probably going to mix it with some some other kind of shader, or maybe even a texture or something. This one right here is the translucent shader, which it's hard to really tell what it's doing right now, but it's kind of basically by default just letting light pass through it a little. So you can see this ear is actually looking a little blue. It's letting light from behind it pass through. What you're going to use this shader for is um, most likely nature, like plants, um, leaves, and grass will let light, light pass through them. And if you want to get your uh, materials looking realistic, you're going to use this for that kind of thing. You could also use it for skin um, to let light pass through, but that's a, a very useful shader. This right here is the transparent shader. Uh, this is something really by itself it's not that useful but once again mixing it with other shaders you could get some very cool things with this um, I'll show some examples of that in later tutorials this right here is the emission shader this is what we were using earlier to make those light planes to light our scene um, generally aside from using it as a light source you're not going to really use it by itself um, sometimes you could use, you know, really, yeah, you're just going to use it for lighting. Um, I used it for some neon signs in one of my scenes, but really that's its most useful uh, purpose. These are obviously not all the shaders. There are a bunch more, but I'm not going to go over all of them right now, especially once you add the mix into it and you're going to start combining all these shaders to create different things. Uh, what I will recommend doing, though, is here you go um, going to the blender wiki and it has a page basically explaining what sh what each shader does and you know maybe why you'd use it it kind of explains the theory behind them it's a good place to look for you know most questions you have about blender you could look here for at least some kind of information this one right here is very useful even I was wondering uh, they have they have the holdout shader which I was wondering what it was for and uh, it looks like you could use it for compositing purposes stuff like that so it seems pretty useful over here I'll link this on the page but you should definitely check out the blender wiki and uh, okay so I think we are done with this tutorial in the next tutorial we're gonna go over texturing so I will see you then. Thanks.